Uh, thank you so much. May I call you Mark? Is that okay? You absolutely may. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for jumping in and thanks for talking with me. Thanks also for the lovely, it looks like storyboarding art behind you over your shoulder. Oh, no, that's uh, various comic book pages. Oh, love uh, it. Love it. Uh, kind of burned out, but uh, I guess over there you can see some. Uh, right behind my shoulder there are my, these are by one of my favorite cartoonists, uh, Basil Wolverton. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I have loved since I was a kid and finally was able to get some of his originals. And uh, some of these are just like some of my original art I bought over the years. Some, some of my really my favorite things. And okay. uh, what you're not seeing are the ones in front of me, which are uh, even more favorite things. So oh, I, I'm sure. I'm still just kind of a kid that started buying comics when I was a kid and you looked over here, you'd see about 3,000 comics stacked up. Nice, nice. Uh huh. Which I'm slowly auctioning off now that I'm a little older and, you know, doing that thing. Not want to leave them all to my son. So, right. who has no interest in comics whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, an impressive collection. And you also have an impressive collection of work. And I'll just hat tip a few titles um, for folks out there to connect. So, uh, of course, work for DC and Dark Horse. I work on another podcast with a friend, and we were just reading the Secret Origins special number one. It has your very wonderful origin story of Harvey Dent Two Face featured in mm -hmm. that book. Um, work for Dark Horse, including aliens and predator and uh some of those things you've also written in the world of television and film i believe the mask being yeah. one of those uh, yeah and time cop yeah yep and um a lot of television so from mm -hmm. uh some i won't mention because i they weren't my favorites but um <laughs> you know smallville and heroes and falling skies was a favorite battlestar mm -hmm. galactica was a big favorite Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Daredevil, um, Ash versus Evil Dead, which sort of scratched an itch of my love of Evil Dead since I was uh, for a long time, ever since it came out. And uh, and then uh, the last show I did was Swamp Thing, which ended up on the CW. So. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that incarnation of Swamp Thing as yeah, well. Exactly. Yeah, I enjoyed the one in the 90s, but that one felt more true to the source material in a lot of ways yeah we we really wanted to make it true to the source material we wanted to be true to the uh uh obviously it was created by bernie wrightson and len ween and uh, we sort of went toward the uh steve Bissett, uh uh alan moore uh john toddleman run which i think at a time when i'd fallen out of comics to some extent brought me into comics Mm -hmm. That along with uh, some Frank Miller's work and uh, Alan Moore's other stuff like uh, V for Vendetta and then yeah. Watchmen and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So so probably another fulfillment there in working on Daredevil as well, I would imagine. Um, Daredevil, yeah. I mean, I loved uh, the comics Daredevil, uh, mm -hmm. which when I was uh, younger. And uh, um, yeah, that was... Uh, it was it was really cool and uh you know the cast was amazing on that so that was yeah that was fun to work on and i you know i wrote the punisher mm -hmm. which was uh not actually a niche i wanted to scratch but was interesting and uh but yeah writing daredevil at that and uh actually they've all you know smallville was sort of doing the superman thing superboy mm -hmm. and uh, uh battlestar science fiction which i've always loved falling sky is the same so I've been able to work in a lot of fantasy genres and superhero and um, things that cross between them. And, and I love horror, too. So uh -huh. uh, I've actually written more pilots for horror that didn't happen than did. But that's the life of uh, TV. Um, so anyway, yeah, stayed busy. Yeah, that that seems to be, as you said, the life of TV and, and just a thing. I'll I'll read a news story about something exciting and then uh, I wait for it and I wait for it. And I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but just not on my screen. Then um, you mentioned Smallville. Uh, love how that story just expanded and brought in so many characters and elements of the DC universe over time. Well, that was after I left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was there the first three seasons, so... I was there when it was strictly no flights, no tights, uh, and DC was being very strict about not letting Smallville use other characters. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, we, uh, I know they wanted to uh, try to have a young Bruce Wayne and that sort of thing that was just never going to fly back then. And then all of a sudden the floodgates opened after I left, I guess, and you could, you know, a million heroes in there, which was kind of interesting, but, uh, yeah, I, I had moved on to other things by then. So, yeah, yeah, but um, necessary groundwork uh, and development by all means. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, so, I'm curious comics, television, film, what, what's connected you with the world of the visual and sort of creating in this media or these media, I should say? You know, I, you, I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just always loved writing since I was like five. Uh-huh. I don't know why I wanted to be a writer since I was like five years old. I just knew it. And so, um, you know, I, I I grew up in a little suburb of Portland, Oregon called Aloha, where back, uh, we're talking back in the 60s and 70s now, back then, you know, becoming a screenwriter or writing comics was like this impossible fantasy you know, my, my parents didn't understand it. My friends didn't understand it. Um, and uh, I'm not sure I understood it, but uh, it was always my goal. And so, uh, you know, I basically worked my way to a point where uh, uh, I moved to L.A. in uh, 1983 and uh, tried to break into the, you know, work to where didn't try. I finally broke in, but worked mm-hmm. to break into the movie business. Um, of course, the minute I left Portland, uh, Dark Horse Comics started, uh-huh. and uh, they're based in Portland, Oregon, a little town outside. And um, my uh, my roommate, right before I left, was Randy Stradley, who's one of the co-founders of Dark Horse with Mike Richardson. Uh-huh. So uh, we were all into comics too, um, and uh, that became sort of my 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 leap into professional work. But I'd always loved them when I was uh, like. 13 i think something like that i started up what they call an amateur press group um which they're called appas and uh they are groups where uh like-minded individuals print up printed back then printed up their little magazines land on on things no one will understand now ditto mimeograph mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. some some xerox and copying machine but a lot of zero a lot of ditto and uh, I had a mimeograph myself because I couldn't afford uh, Xerox back then. It was really expensive. And uh, so people would contribute their little magazines to that. And so people would join. Uh, it was just like, do you want to join? Sure. And so as it grew, more people joined. And so people joined very young in their careers were like Frank Miller, who went on to do The Dark Knight and lots of other stuff. Or Paul Chadwick, who created Concrete. Or Mike Richardson and Randy Stradley, who started Dark Horse. They were all members of APA, the APA I started for a mm-hmm. while. Mm-hmm. And, um, but that just shows even when I was 13, as I just really wanted to figure out how I could get some venue to write in. I always wanted to be an artist. I was never any good. So I became a writer and uh, happy I did, actually. Um, and uh, so, anyway, that's sort of the uh, beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask what sorts of stories you're drawn to and what it is about a story that really um, gets your creative juices sort of flowing. And so you mentioned horror in particular. So curious about the uh, connections and the driving force there. Um, Again, you know, when I was younger, I read a lot of uh, uh, Robert Block Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Richard Matheson. So sort of the the more poppy classics, you know, they weren't like the older one. I mean, they were they were contemporary back then. Uh, then Stephen King, when he started, I love Stephen King. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I, I one of my last pilots I did was Hellraiser, which was Clive Barker. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll admit I didn't read a lot of Clive Barker when I was younger, but I certainly saw the Hellraiser movies, and um, so uh, those were you know Im- impactful. Uh (laughs) at the time pretty strong stuff oh yeah Uh, um you know one of my favorite movies of all time uh was texas chainsaw massacre Uh i saw Uh the first day when it came out uh no one was there except me and my buddy a couple other people one of whom walked out um Uh it's so so strong which when you see it now it's still a powerful movie but it's not that strong Uh um but that that 
the idea of just getting a jolt like that and uh always always attracted me for some reason and um so i've always been drawn to science fiction and horror um as i got into movies and television obviously there were opportunities to do crime and la you know uh, law and order which i love by the way i love those type of shows uh-huh. um but um you know i i always liked the idea of science fiction you know because um or horror because you know in a cop show things are regimented by the real world to some extent you know uh-huh. Uh-huh. um a guy fires a gun it shoots a bullet if you're going to be arrested you go to some kind of jail in science fiction all those rules are off the table uh-huh. and so you know if you fire a gun it could you know fire a ray gun it could be something else a machine who you can play with it in your mind and, and it doesn't have to be a gun uh-huh. so uh i don't know why i'm using gun analogies because i don't like guns but that's yeah. another story <laughs> um but uh anyway it's always a that always appealed to me, the idea that you're working in a slightly more fantastic realm. Uh-huh. Something like Battlestar was grounded in very real human emotions, but it still had the really fun um, uh, you know, Cylons and strange technologies and planets they landed on. No aliens. We never did aliens, which was a big deal. Never do aliens on that show, but uh-huh. certainly odd planets. And, um, you know, so you, the world's opened up a bit more. The other thing that's fun about science fiction, uh, Battlestar especially, was that um, you could uh, tell stories that were one one step removed from our world. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You could tell stories about politics or about uh, hot button issues. Um, we did an abortion story on Battlestar, but since it's about a not us, it's about a whole different race of people you know it's all fantasy basically it's made up Uh um you can tell those stories and they don't feel quite as uh hot button as they do if you're telling them with real people in today's world so there's some of the fun things about it but mostly i just like for whatever reason just love those worlds and i was lucky enough to find a lot of work in those worlds it wasn't always the case you know Uh you know when i first started but uh um, after a while, it seems like the movie business caught up to comics. Obviously, yeah. big time now. So yes, yeah, where absolutely. were they twenty years ago? You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, well, and you said some things that I love about science fiction there as well, because science fiction is just a go-to for me. The the way the stories are kind of a mirror; they're just sort of a funhouse mirror for life. So, uh, sort of a Ray Bradbury uh, analogy there, and. Um, thinking about the way that the human being still has to be a center of it, or at least some kind of human experience. Uh, and yet such elevated creativity. Well, I agree. I, I always looked for, when I looked at a story, like if I was going to adapt a story, um, which I did some adaptations over time and, and obviously working on other people's shows like Battlestar Galactica, uh-huh. you know, the first thing I would look at to as, as, as a writer wanting to come into that is, Am I interested in the characters? Do they do something that I feel like I can contribute to? Uh-huh. There's some stories I don't feel like I, I really have a lot to contribute to. Um, but there's some I feel like, okay, that I can I can work with. And uh so when I uh Swamp Thing being another one, when when I'm you know, I go in to talk about Swamp Thing, I go, Well, that's just so rich uh-huh. with uh uh, you know, these dramatic characters, these characters you know, thrown together by fate who've been cursed by these terrible forces beyond our understanding and yet it turns out not to be quite the curse they thought and uh-huh. you know it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it was really uh, fun to let your brain kind of run wild with uh-huh. uh, that sort of a story um but again always at the core of it um one thing I, I i used to always sort of have in my head and used to tell my writers when we were working on shows i was running was if try to find a story that would work without the aspects of the supernatural and the fantastic um an emotional story in the center of this Uh and then all the other stuff is is fun and obviously it it drives plot and story too but um if we don't have a core emotional story to follow i don't care and so it's always about what do i how do i find a way to make the audience care how do i find a way to make 
to make me care, but more than that, the audience care about these characters. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, so it always started from character. And uh, you always find yourself going wrong when you don't do that. When you go like, okay, this will be all spectacle or uh -huh. whatever, or this will be the horror movie to end all horror movies, you know? And it's yeah. like, well, no, <laughs> who do you want? Who do you want to root for here? Who do you want to follow? Who do you like? Who do you not like? Uh -huh. It doesn't have to be really sophisticated, <laughs> but it has to be something. So, yeah, yeah. And you were talking about Swamp Thing and just, just an interesting meld there because you have a character who's going through this this strange experience making sense of the world uh it's kind of superhero but not um i mean thinking about wes craven directing right. the, the original film so there's definitely that horror aspect that you can play into with that story as well yeah yeah we we definitely played more into the the horror aspect and um uh, and, and the human dramas around that and uh the tragedy of swamp thing who's just this guy who was basically metamorphed into this creature <laughs> and uh um by malevolent forces that, that did it to him and by less than malevolent forces who essentially seemed to do it to rescue his life yeah. um and uh um, so yeah i i ended up being very proud of that even though uh it was uh, a short-lived show unfortunately uh -huh. but uh you uh kind of bump into that once in a while in the movie and television world so yeah i smile now wasn't very funny at the time but... oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah so. um yeah but a great great series of episodes there to tell that story well thanks yeah Thank you. Appreciate yeah that. absolutely um a little while ago you were talking about frank miller and um some of the folks that you worked with early on paul chadwick uh, i'm curious about some of the collaborations and it could be comics it could be film television whatever uh feels most appropriate some of the collaborations that have been sort of the best experiences um yeah i mean i think uh i love to collaborate i mean a lot of a lot of writing is very solitary which is another reason i think i got into writing i I, I liked that alone time to just work on stories. And there was a time when the most fun I could have still that time was when you are working on a story and you, you suddenly look up at the clock and go like, Oh, five hours have gone by. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that amazing trance like feeling when you're just in the groove, you know, you're really like making something happen here. And it may not be a good, you throw it out, but you're kind of into it at the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, in comics, obviously I collaborate because I'm working with artists and, um, and I have co-written with various people. Uh, so, you know, I would I would go back to uh, a business collaboration that's been amazing uh, for me and, and is, is, continues to this day is with Dark Horse. Um, I really started my writing career uh, writing comics with Dark Horse. And then I wrote Time Cop and the Mask uh, with Dark Horse. And, uh, um, you know, and I, I still... I talk to Randy all the time still. Um, he's now retired from Dark Horse. And uh, I talk to Mike every once in a while. So, you know, we continue to discuss, you know, projects and, but just life because we, uh, I knew all these guys before Dark Horse. Uh -huh. So um, we, we became friends before we became business associates and friends. So, you know, that, that turned out to be a very uh, fortunate uh, yeah, just a great collaboration to be able to work with guys like that. Um, the great thing about Mike and Randy was is they're very honest. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. You don't have to watch your back every minute, um, yeah. which you do with some other. Trust me. Oh, um, yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, so that part, that was great. Uh, artistically, I always loved the work that Mark Nelson did on Aliens. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, the first one, I thought he did an amazing job. Uh, Chris Warner, who's now an editor on a book I'm doing for Dark Horse, which is, shows how full circle everything goes. Love it. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. drew my Predator, my very first comic he drew, which was called The American for Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he drew Predator for me. And I just thought his art was, uh, and I continue to think his art, some of the best comic book art. And that's not a pejorative, just best for this world mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. um, I've ever seen. I, I, I just loved every second of what he did. I loved every page. Um, 
in uh, film and television. Look, I, I love working on Battlestar. I'm still great friends with uh, most of the writers. We see each other every once in a while still. Mm -hmm. uh, there's cast reunions. We just had one. But, uh, there was a strike that just happened. And we had a big Battlestar gathering at the strike. And, you know, I, saw, I got to, you know, give a big hug to Eddie Olmos and, you know, Mary McDonald and, you know, yeah. and all the other writers. And uh, it, that was really fun. So that was a real important collaboration. Uh, Swamp Thing's the same, a little more recent. But, you know, I've stayed in touch with a number of the cast from that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I really enjoyed working with Will Patton, who I worked with on Falling Skies and sort of bade cajoled to come into Swamp Thing, which fortunately yeah. he agreed. Yeah, um, yeah, He's great. I love his work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, look, I, I've had great experiences on virtually every project I've been on. And I've had some less than great experiences with some of the studios. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but um, it's life. I've been incredibly yeah. fortunate. So to, to you know, whine about it, it would be stupid so i'm not gonna um, I, I understand and, and studios seem to keep trying to learn the same lessons over and over again it seems like you know what happens is 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 the people change over and then they uh -huh. got to learn the lessons again yeah, um, yeah. i'll tell you a funny story funny ish funny ha -ha. Not, not funny ha -ha. anyway i was working for a studio which will go unnamed uh -huh. <clears throat> except it was sony and uh <laughs> so uh, various things had gone haywire where they ended up owing me money on a project and they just said, well, we're not going to pay. Uh -huh. And uh, I had a contract and everything. And I, and I went, well, wait, you're not going to pay? And they said, no, we're just not going to. And like, you know. So anyway, got into it a bit and uh, have a great lawyer. Uh -huh. And my lawyer got into it with them. And uh, they said, look, if you push this, you'll never work here again. And I went, well, I don't really want to work for people who refuse to pay me. So right, right. Okay. So it goes. Anyway, so I finally got paid, um, and uh, like two years later, so I guess I was never going to work for them again. Two years later, I get a call. Sony wants to meet. They have a project for you. I go, Sony. Wait a minute. I thought they hated me. I thought I was never going to work there again. All those guys are all gone. Ah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I learned was, yeah, I'll live them. Yeah. So my career lasted still on. I'm still still working on things, but my career is gone now for about uh, 30. Well, I don't know, 1990 to now. So mm -hmm. 33 years. Yeah. And um, uh, a lot of their careers don't. So, you know, yeah. you just keep going. Yeah. You know, and uh, try to do the best work you can. Mm -hmm. And uh, try not to be crazy, which is an attribute. <laughs> uh, try not to tell stories about the studios in public. <laughs> Oops. Uh, right. That was a long time ago, by the way. So yep, yep, good, sure good. everybody that said we want to work with you now are gone. Um, <laughs> so uh, anyway, it's just a, it's a small world. And yet it's a world that's ever changing. So yeah. uh, the great thing about it is it's, believe it or not, to some extent, a meritocracy. Um, it is a lot of who you know, and, and there is a lot of networking and stuff. But ultimately, if you can't produce, it doesn't matter who you know and how long you, you do it, with a few exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, you're just not going to last. And uh, so, you know, what that means is, is any dope can come in here from a low Oregon and have a career. So yeah. there you go. Yeah, And keep doing good work, it sounds like. I, you know, I, I, I can't stop. I, um, I'm, uh, I'm getting up there a little bit, but, uh, I, I find that I just have to write stuff. It's, um, uh, whether I need to run a set again or not, I don't know. That's really hard work yeah. But uh, yeah. to, to write stories and create stories. That's, that's really fun. Yeah. But you oh, know, if someone oh. called me up tomorrow and said, we want you to run a show. I'd, I'd mull it over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the show, I'm sure. Depending on the show. It, a lot of it depends on the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It really depends on the people. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, by means of a, a closing question, you mentioned continuing to work. So curious about the creative journey and um, sort of next steps and what's going on right now. 
Well, so uh, in tw uh, 2022, well, last year, I finished two pilots. One for Steve, one was an adaptation of a Stephen King book, um, and the other was an adaptation of Hellraiser. Uh -huh. And because of the world we're in, neither one of them went to, to series. Uh -huh. And I just thought, wow, if I can't get Stephen King and Clive Barker off the ground, <laughs> it's, it's a tough world out there. Uh -huh. It turned out there was just a lot of Stephen King, and Hellraiser fell victim to uh, internal politics. Uh, uh -huh. You may have heard Warner Brothers has been bought like 17 times in the last four years. And so one of those yeah. times is twice during Hellraiser was bought and sold while we were developing it. Um, anyway, uh, so since then I took a little bit of a breather and then um, I uh, worked up a comic book project with uh, Dark Horse, an original, and I'm working with a very good friend of mine, uh, Aaron Douglas, who played the chief on Battlestar mm -hmm. as an actor, but he's also a writer. And uh, so it's called Borealis. And it's a, a very fun story about a woman who, uh, uh, very character-based, starts with character. It's about a woman who is grew up in this small town called Kainu, Alaska, which is at the very tippy top of Alaska, a dry town. There's no booze allowed there. Uh -huh. um, so it's riddled with gangsters bringing in booze and stuff like that. Right, right. Um, she grew up there and found herself uh, in a very bad situation and was spirited away to Anchorage where she became a police officer, uh, Alaska State Trooper. And now 13 years later, um, there's been a strange murders happening up in Kainu and she's told she needs to go up there and deal with it. So she goes, and what she discovers is that in her past is a supernatural connection uh -huh. that begins to come out as she's up there um, and re-meets with her dying mother and with her grandmother. And um, the spirit force begins to come out and uh, causes trouble. It is uh -huh. trouble. Uh -huh. And um, so it's kind of a combination of a cop story with a supernatural story, but all very character based, and uh, it was, that's been really fun to do. First issue of that comes out um, in about uh, three weeks from Dark Horse. Wonderful. It's a three Wonderful. issue mini series. So art by um, Cliff Richards, who's very good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, impressive resume and impressive. Uh, looking forward to the work to continue and checking out Borealis. Thanks. Check yeah. it out. It's good. Yeah. I promise. I I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, speaking of checking things out, where can folks go? Uh, well, I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you send me, if you go to my site, there's a pinned. Uh, well, actually, the best way is send me an instant message that mm -hmm. says, I know you write comics. Can I link to you? Because I just don't want everybody to. I don't. There's a lot of strange yeah. folks that want to link to you. So. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Ask and you can link to my site. And I post a lot of nonsense about my world and stuff. Um, and uh, I'm on Twitter. So at Mark Verheiden. Still old. Good. Well, it's not called Twitter anymore. Sorry. Well, yes, yes. But I won't X, say what but... it's called. Yes. X, yes. <laughs> yeah. You said it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> run by someone I won't talk about. But yes. anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I'm on those two things, so check those out. I used to, I used to have a kind of a website, but I uh, it's I, not anymore, and you know why bother? <laughs> yeah, I'm, lazy. yeah. I'm getting lazy. What can I tell you? <laughs> there's only so much web you can do at a certain point. Well, there's only so much brain space you have for that stuff. At least for me, I'd rather work on a story or something. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, Mark, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for Absolutely. the conversation yep. uh, and looking forward to sharing this and hope to talk again at some point That'd in the great. near future. Thanks. Right. Thank luck. you. See you. See you.